side, though, there is a lot to unpack in this conviction. More than 80 hours of testimony down to the final decision. Look who's here up late with us tonight. Our chief legal correspondent, Katie Barlow, here uh, on the final five tonight. So, Katie, let's get right to it. We've talked extensively about this. Uh, all the legal analysts all along had said out of these criminal cases, this was the weakest. Were you surprised that it was uh, that, that Trump had 34 convictions here? Well, look, the prosecution put up quite a case, right, with over 20 witnesses marching through the evidence. And clearly they got through to the jury because the jury deliberated for just about 10 hours and were able to reach a unanimous verdict. And that's even after a couple of clarifying questions we saw go to the judge asking about specific testimony about that famous 2015 Trump Tower meeting where they kind of concocted this scheme to catch and kill negative stories about former President Donald Trump in the lead up to the 2016 election. Uh, so getting 12 New Yorkers to agree on one thing, never easy, uh, but something prosecutors clearly meticulously tracked and went after and were able to successfully do fairly quickly. One of the things we heard from the former president and from his defense along the way was there was no way that he was going to get a fair trial in New York City, especially a jurisdiction that was so overwhelmingly democratic. But, you know, it is the whole idea of a jury of, of his or her peers here. But let's go past all of that and look at the appeals process, because we know that's going to happen. Uh, at what point does that window open up and, and where does it go from there? Well, you hit the nail on the head there, Jim, because one of the main arguments that Trump's defense team is going to make when they appeal this sentence, and they can't make this appeal until after he's sentenced on July 11th, is that Trump didn't get a fair trial for a number of reasons. One, I don't think that they believe it was in the right location, that there could have been um, fair and impartial jurors in Manhattan in order to make this ultimate decision. They also make arguments about the type of evidence that was allowed in uh, and that was used for the conviction here. We talked about when Stormy Daniels took the stand and got into some explicit details about the sexual encounter she says she had with him in 2006. He still continues to deny. There was $130,000 paid to her to vary that story. Uh, and so she got into really explicit detail, went kind of beyond the questions that prosecutors asked. And Trump's defense team immediately asked for a mistrial after that. And they believe that that is part of the reason why the jury couldn't be fair after hearing some of that testimony. Testimony. All of that will be grounds for appeal. And the way that the appeal works in New York, after he's sentenced, they can appeal up to the mid-level court in New York, and he gets that appeal as of right. He's allowed to go straight sure. to the mid-level court there. Then they can ask the, the highest court of appeals in New York uh, to take the case if they want to appeal further. But that court does not have to hear the case. And, of course, he can try to make a constitutional question, go up to the U.S. Supreme Court after and, that. And, and just for people who, who don't follow New York politics, who I imagine as a lot of our viewers right now, uh, New York State, uh, by and large, is not this is not as liberal as New York City. You know, New York City, some of the upstate cities, but New York City, uh, New York State itself, uh, you know, there are many, many uh, conservative leaning justices on some of those higher courts out there. So it's not a slam dunk that you would have the same result in the uh, on the state level as you would in New York City. I want to ask you, though, Katie, as we look at this, because look, all, for all intents and purposes, and maybe this is what some Democrats were hoping for, they could call Donald Trump now a convicted felon. But what what does that tag mean? Because a lot has been said about would he be able to even vote for himself uh, in Florida, which is where he's registered now. Well, that question about whether he can actually vote as a convicted felon is a good one because, of course, Florida is notorious for restricting the rights of felons being able to vote in the state of Florida. But the deal with Florida is if you are a convicted felon living in Florida, but that felony conviction was in another state here, New York, uh, then Florida will defer to that state's laws on disenfranchisement, on the ability to vote. And New York law says that felons are not allowed to vote so long as they are in incarcerated. But okay. once they are released from prison, they have the right to vote. And so it'll actually depend on what happens at sentencing and if he's ordered to be incarcerated. So we'll see. Katie, I'm getting the wrap, but I just had to ask you really quickly here because we know that a tactic in many cases has been delay, delay, delay. Is there any yeah. way that you see July 11th delayed at this point for that sentencing? No, I think we're about to see a reverse tactic where we're going to see Trump's defense team move as quickly as possible to appeal and poke holes in this. I think we're going to see a quick reversal.